Um, I want to welcome you to the November regular meeting of the Northampton Housing Authority, it being 530 and there being a quorum. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, I will ask then, please for the secretary to call the roll. Yes, uh, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. I don't have her yet. I'm going to skip her. Commissioner Brooks. You're you're muted, but I can see that you're here. He's trying to unmute. I'm just waiting. There you go, Jim. You're unmuted now. No, you there, there you, you are. Go. There you are. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And Commissioner Jones? Here. Thank you. And Commissioner Tarbutton? Here. Thank you. I'm closer. Commissioner uh Richards with us yet? I didn't hear from her. Did you, um, Madam Chair? Not yet, but I'm sure she'll be along. Um, I think that we can go ahead because we have the quorum. Okay. So that being said, I'll ask first if we can move to the comment section. So I'll ask um, Jim to go ahead and facilitate that comment section, please. Jack? Oh, yes, please, Jack, please. Yes, okay. Thank you. Jim thought he had a new job, <laughs> everyone. Uh, so just a reminder, um, everyone is allowed three minutes. And we need you to state um, where you're calling in from, um, as well as your full name for the record for attendance purposes, since we're on Zoom. Um, I now will um, go to the first person on my screen, uh, which is um, KC. You see, you can unmute yourself. Just remind us where you're calling from. I'm from McDonald, and I'm not quite ready. Go to call someone else, please. Yeah, I will swing back to you. Um, the next person on my list is Angela Santanello. Angela? Uh, okay, I will keep going. After that is Anna Gilbert. You can unmute yourself. No comment at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. It looks like, Angela, you've unmuted. Are you ready to Yes. Go? I am so sorry. I could not find the mute button. <laughs> That's okay. So this is Angela Santanello from uh, Walter Salvo. And I have personally had um, several different tenants talk to me previously about um, when we're, everyone's going to have access to the laundry rooms again. And we, we all try to explain that until everybody is compliant with this um, situation in the building, that um, we have to keep that locked up until to avoid the spread because we're trying to contain the spread and, and control it. But um, it's our understanding that not everybody's being compliant. But we do have several residents who are having trouble getting to and from laundry facilities to be able to do their laundry, et cetera. So I'm wondering if there's something we can do to help help out these residents in that aspect. Um, regard, uh, regarding the um, bathrooms, I haven't heard any negative complaints about the bathrooms being locked at night, and that's working well. Um, all in all, everything seems to be going copacetic. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. The next Thanks, person Angela. on my screen who has the ability to unmute themselves is identified as Donna. Can you just make sure you let us know if you're a tenant and where you're calling in from? Yes, I'm a tenant and I'm calling in from Walter Salvo House. Uh, the floor is yours. Hello. I'm just listening. Okay, Donna, thank you. Thank you. The next person who has the ability to unmute themselves um, is identified as Ruby.
Uh, Ruby, you can unmute yourself. Okay, we will continue on. The next person is Yasiri Castillo. Yasiri, you can go ahead and unmute. That's okay, I can see you're trying. We'll give you another second. Can you hear me? Yes, your floor is yours. Okay, hi, my name is Yasiri Castillo. I'm a resident from Walter Salvo House. And my comment and question is like, technically about the same what Ms. Uh, Santinello said, like, uh, I wanna know how long left we had to wait till the laundry rooms are gonna be open. And is and what the housing authority is gonna do with the people is refusing to follow up like the process because that's what it's holding to the common areas be open. It's just like what housing is planning to do if they have a plan B for that. Like what they're gonna do because it's quite a long time already and like it's kind of pricey too. So we wanna know uh what are the thoughts and like the ideas or the suggestions you guys have for us. Thank you. Thank you, Yasiri. Um the next group, it looks like Mr. Edwards, you have a few people. Um, so we can go one by one. If you could just remind them to please state their full name, and I will be keeping track of the three minutes for each person, not just a one three-minute cap for everyone. Well, thank you very much. We're going to start with Rick. Rick, you want to come around? But I'm David Edwards, the Vice President of the LTO at this Walter Salvo House. And uh, we're here to just um, with several of the tenants. Rick is going to start. Ahead, well, can you see me? Slide up, Rick. Oh, let me slide up the chair. I'm sorry, right in front of it. We can't cool. see you yet, Rick. How's that? Is that a little bit better? Much better. Is that better? All right. First things first. I live at 710 unit, 710 on the seventh floor. I have no complaint, but happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Anybody, Anybody else? Like the elevator. All right, well, my name is David Edwards. I'm the vice president of the um, Salvo House LTO. And I would like to address the issues of the bed bugs and the maintenance being done in the building. We've had several complaints on maintenance issues that have been going on for- Mr. Edwards, can you come a little closer to the to the phone? You're in and out. Oh, sorry. Okay. Much better. Thank you. Sorry. Me, me and the president, Al Shagan, have been taking up um, um, complaints from residents and the quality of life, health and safety issues going on at the Savile House. Now, we have been without laundry rooms for two months and without a community room for two months. But we only seen the um, the brown chemical people to see if what we could have. So if they're not treating them rooms, why aren't the rooms open? We have three maintenance men for 179 units, 192 units. That doesn't seem nowhere near. We have one for the yard, one for the um, the cleanliness, and one for maintenance. That doesn't seem to be nowhere near enough staff to maintain properly maintain a building of this size. And we want to know when and how these problems are going to start to get rectified. They won't answer you. No, they don't answer. All right, Al Chagman's next. Let me just clarify because I heard some folks there. No, we're not. We're not allowed to uh, go back and forth with residents in this portion of the meeting. So I apologize for that, but that it is related to open meeting law. We can really only speak to those items that we have on the posted agenda. So uh, back to you, Jack. All right, it looks like Mr. Chagan, Chagnon, you're up next. Yes, uh, my concerns is the bed bug issue. We are, it's 
we are trying to help out. The residents in the building are trying to help out. And we have other residents that aren't helping out. And it's making things worse when you have a bunch of junk left in the hallways every weekend that you're not here. Okay, I posted a sign to tell these people to get this stuff out of the lobby, get it out of the area. But my sign wasn't uh, recognized by housing, so it was immediately tore down. But I haven't seen any other sign to let people know. Stop putting the stuff in the lobbies. Now, if you'd like to go up to the second floor right now, there's a total mess up there. There's dressers, baby furniture, and that should have been out of here today. I don't know why it's still here, but it's not helping matters. It's making things worse. We want this, the restrooms, uh, the community rooms open. We want people to be able to do their laundry and it ain't getting done. So I don't know what you have to do to make it move a little faster, but we need to get this moving. Thank you. So I'm gonna pass it on to somebody else to speak. Carol, I'm the secretary for the LTO. And I wanna comment on the broken elevator. It seems to be you have a, a tape on the first floor, but none of the other floors. So people are getting in the broken elevator on the other floors, not knowing it's broken. And that's a serious liability. So somebody needs to deal with that like now. Thank you. Uh, before the next um, person goes, I just want for the record to note that at 5.42 p.m., Commissioner Richards joined us. Uh, sorry, I couldn't get on. Okay, thank you. Is that everyone, Mr. Edwards? Um, does anyone else want to speak? Uh, I'll speak. Okay, Heidi. Heidi, one more person. Oh, chair, how nice. Hi, I'm Heidi. How are you? Apartment 610 in Saldo. Um, all right. So I as I understand it from the bug guys themselves on their sheet that they give us for chemical treatments that was accidentally given to us, that there's actually two more treatments that need to be done before the common areas are opened up, like the laundry rooms in the community room and all that so those need to be done i've also suggested to kara in an email on september 27th um two days before everything was locked up um that we need to get rid of these rugs because they're extremely unsanitary because they have feces and urine embedded in them and there's probably bugs underneath since uh your maintenance and your bug guys are um basically yeah they they're reporting that they're seeing the bed bugs and roaches crawling all over the floors which when your bug guys come here and they do the apartments they are not treating the apartments above below or around the infected apartments and the heat treatment is only 95 percent effective when the apartments heat up they become uncomfortable and move to the other apartments and so when you have a million bed bugs in some of these apartments whatever 5% of that million is, is getting to other apartments. This is how it keeps spreading. You've had this problem for two years and it needs to be taken care of. And you need to be treating and setting chemical traps for the bugs when they try to escape to the other apartments. Uh, also, um, we have here who... Heidi, I don't know if you moved the phone, but you're breaking in and out. You might want to slide to back to the left if you could. Yeah, what one of the uh, one of the minutes he has um somebody somebody is uh not um she's not on the lease, but she's living with him, and she also has a no trespass, and she dumpster dives frequently into the infected dumpsters and brings back more bed bug infested stuff, which you're paying for. And this guy also totaled his apartment with a fire, and you still rewarded him with new everything. And while the rest of us still have to live with stuff that's 20 years old or more. So um, I, I don't know why he gets to be rewarded with all this and gets away with it, but the rest of us, if we ever did it, we get kicked out. So it's a it's a problem because you need to deal with these people who are bringing the bed bugs back into the building because you're just wasting money and you're wasting money when you're not treating and setting up chemical traps around the apartments that are getting heat treated 
And so I don't know if these people are informing you that are doing these services, but they're fleecing you is what they're doing. They're, they're actually robbing you. They're not doing the job they need to be doing. Any idiot can go online and look on YouTube and learn about this stuff. This isn't rocket science. This isn't something that takes a whole lot of brains. So it took me two days and I'm in college. So, you know, I don't really have time to do this stuff, but I do it anyway. So anyways, that's my bit. Yeah. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Heidi. Mr. Edwards, is that the last for you? Yeah, oh, me. You got one more. Uh, you're muted before you start speaking. We can't hear you. Uh, you're still muted. Please unmute. Mr. Edwards, your computer, please unmute. I am Lisa Sergeant. I live at Walter Savo, apartment 627. I would like to also pick up my fellow tenants, my fellow neighbors, and say that I feel as though we were all down here talking and saying that all the money that we spend on laundry taking it to the laundromat, that care should reimburse every single one of us for the laundry that we have to spend at the laundromat because it costs every one of us a lot more money than what we spend here at Walter Sabo. It costs me $11 a week at the laundromat and here at Walter Strabo, it may cost me $5 a week. Mm -hmm. So I feel as though you should reimburse every single one of us the laundry that we have to spend, that we spend as a laundry mat. And if Tara can't realize what we, what we do, which is within our lease, then go be it. But it's within our rights to have a working laundromat. And it's, you can read our lease if you need to, but it's in our amendment to have a working laundry room. It's in the lease to have a working laundry facility. So, um, so please bring it back to Kira and have her make that decision if you have to. But it's within our rights to have a working laundry facility. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, is that everyone, Mr. Edwards? We're going to move on to the next. Um, we have. We're going to go back to. Uh, Mr. Chagnon, you've already spoken, so the chair has asked us right. to call one per person. Um, no problem, no problem. Is there, I'll, I'll is there anyone else time. there? Everybody is all set, I believe. Thank um, you so much. So we're good at this, this end here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chagnon. Casey, we're going to go back to you if you're available at this time. Yeah, I, I am, and this is very painful. People are hurting, you're harming people. I know it's probably not intentional, but yeah, I'd love to know how you're gonna reimburse these folks. Uh, a friend of mine was at the senior center the other day and she saw stuff being tossed out in the dumpster and the director was there in a hazmat suit. And I imagine she was thrilled to, to get a photo op or whatever, but this is, I, we really need to know your plan. How are you going to reimburse these people? This is on you, I mean, this is a responsibility of the landlord, y'all know that. And my, my little thing is nothing, but apparently the director has found, found it important to tell the workers and some friends of mine who help with my dog to watch out for me, that I'm dangerous. Well, I might be dangerous to her because I speak up and I speak out, but I don't really think it's, 
is really in poor taste. Just look at it that way. And I think all of us want to know how this is going to be resolved. How are you going to reimburse these people? How do you reimburse people for the time tax? How do you reimburse people for the hours they spend getting things straight when you get some bogus friendly reminder? Seriously, I know y'all know better. That's the thing. I know you know better. So please let us know by the next meeting how you're going to deal with this. It's just to painful and harmful and and that's it that's all I got to say but um y'all y'all you can do better is what I'm saying I know you can this is costing too many people their health it really is and you know what do we do to prove that do we have to be locked up in the nut war do we have to show a fever every day what do you, you know how do we go about that it's just obvious and it's painful. So please let us know what you're going to do by the next meeting, please. It's gone on too long. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Chapman. Um, and Joella, do you have a resident comment? Yes, I do. Hi. The floor uh, is yours. Well, uh, firstly, I, I I wanted to say I, I did see uh, uh, administration. I'm not, I don't name names. Uh, really getting a uh, uh, pretty good uh, focus on dealing with some of the issues. They're learning more uh, and where the source of is coming. So I thought that that was admirable. I think I even saw someone in, in Brahmin shirts and then the hazmat shirt because people were talking about it. But then I was thinking, this is a professionals, let the professionals do it because what if you got injured? You know, it's like if I saw a fire and then I see a fire hose, I'm not going to take that hose and put the fire out. That's kind of a... And so I just I thought about that. And I just also wanted to say, you know, I think residents are right. Come weekend, we nobody's here and, and who, who's who's helping, who's monitoring, who's doing this. We're in, I don't ever I didn't hear the word lock lockdown uh, in a sense, but we are locked down in many ways. And I've even sent uh, an invoice to as care uh, as the uh, I was directed last time to the resident services of the money I spent for laundry. I never even heard it. They didn't say I'm gonna reimburse you, just said send it to them or go to them. And it should be reimbursed. And I think about this, I'm looking about it in the proactive preventive thing. We've been dealing with bed bugs, at least with this particular carrier for two years. Not one of us knew anything about the bed bugs, not even then, only as of late when people and the news got involved and that was the part about it and then Initially, because this is two months, I got the notice September 19th. So this is November 20th. So it's been two months, but I thought it was just four people. And then it turned out with the news, there's 10. And I don't know, I'm not going around counting, but people are talking. We don't know. You have robocall, you can say da 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 da, you can communicate and let people know because I'm seeing more and more different people with that Batman hose coming to their place with the heat treatment. And I think it's a, uh, and I do think that everyone should get their car chemically treated just on the safe side, because I think this has been going on long enough and I think you do everything you can. I mean, use some of those doggone trucks, the big trucks you've got to take people's laundry somewhere. I mean, do what you can. I'd like to see the more compassionate thing from the administration as opposed to the transactional thing. And this is really hurting. Somebody said, well, residents can go to the laundromat over there. Can you imagine some of the residents who you see people walking with canes and walkers, so you want them to carry, I mean, just think about it. Put yourself in their shoes, not what you would do, but other people. And I think that I know in myself, I've heard three different versions of what to do. Uh, do this, take this down, put your clothes up so they can get a treatment. No, that's not doing this. Even the, So it's confusing. I know that that's confusing. So it would be nice to solidify everything all at once. I even have people saying, oh, yeah, this is fine. Here we are. And then say, no, it's not. And I'm really kind of sad in a sense, but I, I worry that typically we don't want to scapegoat. We don't want to say, well, it's the person that's doing that. That's why you can't do it. We already got tensions here. We already have anxiety here. We had help from the balcony from, uh, what is that, Northampton neighbors to help people get off their balcony when they had the power wash. People here need some help. And I just don't want to see people blaming. Somebody said, well, it's that person on this floor. He had all these bugs and da-da-da-da-da. Well, no, I, I mean, I'm sorry that happened, but where was the yearly inspections and how come you didn't notice that beforehand? I just think we need to get out of that because that can lead to violence, name calling and anger. And it's already an angry 
hurtful situation where people are going through. If somebody's not in compliance, then send them a note. You're not allowed to go in the TV room or the whatever room or something like that. I think I think that pitting one against each other is very unhealthy and it could really lead up to a lawsuit. So I want to just caution people with that. But overall, I think I appreciate somebody saying uh, happy holidays that are coming up. Um, it is true. And I, you know, people here, be safe here. You're, you're good people, my neighbors. May not like you all, but I love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tarbell Springfield. Um, from, from my screen, it looks like we have covered everyone. Uh, you're more you're muted, uh, Chair Carney. I apologize. I have to keep switching back from my things, and I didn't want to keep my mute button undone. But thank you, everybody, for your comments tonight. Really appreciate it, and echo also the the wishes for a happy holiday to everyone. The next item on our agenda, after all these comments, then I'll turn it over to the executive director for executive director's report. Actually, um, did we address the staff and public comment? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I can tell you that there is no one left from public comment. Everyone is accounted for. Everyone responded during. Um, so if it's OK, we could move to uh, staff. They have the ability to unmute themselves if they're looking. We don't see any. Thank you, Jack. There being no public comment, no staff comment, I'll turn it over to the executive director for the executive director report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, make sure I'm not muted here. Uh, the executive director's monthly summary for November of 2023, the GPR was $232,108, of which uh, we collected 201-50755, which is 87%. The delinquency um, as of today was 149-529.98, um, which is high. Uh, we sent out 200 friendly reminders. Um, we followed up with 105 notices to quit, which reduced the delinquency by $15,961.35. Um, and it increased. It in it continues to decrease each day um, as a result of the notices. Um, number of annual recertifications for the current month, public housing had 104 and Section 8 had 63. Um, uh, Section 8 certified 60, um, and uh, there were three expired due to paperwork and timing of paperwork. Uh, we had on our one bedroom federal applications, 96. Federal applications for the two bedrooms, were 34, 23 three bedrooms, two four bedrooms, and 58 Section 8. Our state applicants had family uh, applicants of 19,027. Elderly disabled was 4,823. We had one move out in public housing. Section 8 had three. We had five move ins in public housing. Section 8 had three. And we had two on notice in public housing. Vacant end of month ready were six. Unready were eight for a total of 14, of which 14 are pre-leased. We completed six make readies, which were all complete rehabs. We took in 329 work orders and started the month with 58, completing 316 work orders, leaving 71 for follow-up. At the last meeting, uh, several resident, several Salvo residents had concerns regarding bed bugs and laundry rooms being closed. Um, our actions taken, a memo went out to all residents with general information regarding bed bugs, including what to do if they think they have bed bugs. We are down to three final units with bed bugs and we are reopening the laundry rooms and an, after another full building treatment of full, full building inspection will take place once the last unit is treated. Um, we just want to put out an extra reminder out there for any residents that are still on the call. There's no cost to treat for bed bugs and cannot we cannot stress enough the importance of not trying to self-treat as it spreads the problem and causes more issues. Over the last month, we had several meetings with um, EOH EOHLC 
um, uh, regarding the stoves at Salvo. Um, and uh, they've come up with a potential solution and have they have ordered a single stove to try their solution before we uh, put it out to residents. I just wanted to have an update on that. The housing authority uh, purchased 150 pumpkins to give residents at all sites for Halloween season. We held pumpkin decorating events and provided light snacks and supplies for decorating of pumpkins. We hosted a Halloween movie night at Florence Heights and Hampshire Heights. Parents and children were invited for pizza and a costume contest, followed by a showing of the nightmare before Christmas. We're happy to say these events were well attended and we look forward to doing them again in the future. We helped residents sign up for free home delivery meals from MANA for Thanksgiving dinner. The deadline to place an order is today, the 20th, by 11 p.m. Call or text 413-570-0787 or go online to mananorthampton.org to request a meal. With the holiday season upon us, we are working on ways to get gifts for children within the Housing Authority. This year, we are coordinating with the Angel Tree Program and Toys for Tots. If you have any questions about how to request toys for someone you know that may be our resident, please call your resident services coordinator for more information. We wish you all a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. So ends the Executive Director Report. Thank you, Director Leeper. And um, I just want to... Uh, also pump up the manna Thanksgiving meal for anyone who wants a meal delivered. It, it's you have until Monday that's today. Well, I think you could still write in and ask for meals to be delivered. I'll be serving some meals. Anyone can just show up. I think it's between 12 and two at the Edwards church. So hope to see some of you there. And again, happy, happy holiday to any, everyone. So, it's still, it's still uh, Madam Chair, they can sign up online or by calling that number until 11 p.m. tonight. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully our meeting won't go that long and you'll have a little time to still be able to make that call. So I'll ask then for commissioners on the call. Are, are, are there any um, questions for the director? Or? Um, there's no questions. Uh, I just think oh, 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 I'm sorry. Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Oh, sure. Um, no, uh, no questions. I thought it was very thorough and uh, very nice. And I appreciate all the things I keep forgetting, you know, kids for tots. I mean, there's so much stuff that's going on. So that's really great. I, I said it kind of almost wish I know there are notices um, going out, but I kind of wish there was also robocalls like you, that used to be. So trying to think about the foot traffic, <laughs> trying not to clutter, uh, if that's also possible for people to. Um, and uh, it was a good report. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? You can just raise your hand or speak up. Okay, then I guess I'll move on to the next item. Switching screens here. Our next item is, don't we have the minutes first? It looks like, oh, well, before the minutes, it looks like, or am I missing the minutes on my sheet here? We have, let's, uh, we have approval of the minutes. That's the October 2023 minutes. May I have a motion, please, from the floor? Uh, motion to approve. Thank you. Moved, Commissioner Brooks, for a second. Second. Thanks, Commissioner Jones. Moved and seconded to approve the October 2023 <laughs> minutes. And now open for discussion. You can raise your hands or digitally or yes, Commissioner Tarbon. Well, first of all, I want to thank for having this uh, packet hand delivered. It's really like snuggling up to a good book and reading everything. It's good because also with the computer stuff, it's good to get things in the papers. So I was able to go through. I didn't have any comments. I mean, I didn't have anything, just comments that I was going to ask about later, but um, well, well written here. So uh, I'll vote yay on this. Thank you. Anyone else have any additions, corrections, or deletions? Okay, I'll ask then the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Abstain. I wasn't there. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. Yes. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we move on then to old business. We had left from that last meeting, um, which was a motion to correct the proposed, the Scribner's errors that were identified in the board bylaws. And um, it, uh, please remind me, was that actually moved by one commissioner or do we need that now? I'll ask again if you need it now. Yes. So is there someone who would move then the corrected Scribner's errors that are in the board packet for the bylaws for purposes of discussion anyway? I'm a little Ooh. Thank you. That was moved and seconded by? I'll I guess second. me. Okay. Okay. I heard, I heard some people in the affirmative and I guess you can figure that out. I, I just need to know, Madam Chair, um, I have that Jim Brooks uh, made the motion. Was there a second? There were two seconds, but you can pick either Commissioner Tarbutton or I think it was Commissioner Richards. So I didn't, I didn't second. I didn't second. You did. Oh, the, it did not. That's a, a pan court. It was me. It was me. I, I seconded Edgar. Uh, okay. okay. I apologize. Seconded by Commissioner. Perfect. Richards. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So moved and seconded. Now folks have in their board packet. And I think Commissioner Tarbutton had wanted to have these in a um, printed out form to be to be reviewed. So I'll ask then for any discussion regarding the Scribner's errors document. Uh, yes, uh, I actually wish I could have the board packet like this every week, but uh, I did some compare and contrasting. And I think we added the one where you did the code of conduct so I don't know my Roman numerals, but on page five, nine, it should be article eight and then article nine, now that you include the code of conduct. So if you could correct that, please. And um, then let me see. Uh, okay. So I'm, I'm sorry, I need some clarification. Right now, article nine reads code of conduct. All board members will follow the code of conduct as outlined in 760 CMR 4.03. Um, okay, you have that. Okay, what you sent me, you didn't have it. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, so it was just a miscommunication. I'm sorry, you got the wrong document. Apologize. We're sorry oh, for that. That's okay. No. Okay. So if that's if that's not something we need to correct, then that's not something we need to. Correct. I want to make sure though it is corrected. It is correct in the board packet that we've all received electronically. Is that okay. correct, uh, Director Leeper? Okay. Yeah, so, I'm looking at the one that was sent out to the board. So maybe when it was printed, the wrong one was printed for her. I'm okay. not sure. Okay. On And also on page four, article four, there was some things. It's a really small thing, but I know we do roll call, tenant issue, staff comment, and public comment, meaning like only one comment is going to come. But I was just thinking for consistency, if it was tenant issues and comments, uh, and then if you could put an S to public comment on number four. And I think then... they should all be comment singular because, because they they oh. they are a title. They're not referring to how many. So it's a period of resident comment, yeah. of staff comment, of public comment. Right. So if just for the consistency, that would seem what would make sense to me. Yes, I got it. So. And then on number five, unless it's in the electronic thing but it was seemed like it was left off the reading and approval of the minutes plus regular meeting and any intervening special meeting and then I don't see the other eight was other committee reports and number six no treasurer's report I asked and so maybe it is is that in the electronic copy again so how it reads um on the copy is uh roll call tenant issues, which needs to be corrected to tenant comment, staff comment, public comment, approval of the minutes of any previous, uh, I, I think you should take that off. It just should say approval of the minutes because that's how we write it. Right. Um, uh, minutes are known to be of previous. Yeah. yeah. Approval of the minutes, executive director's report, unfinished business, new business and adjournment, which is exactly how our agendas read. Okay, so we don't have... Uh... Uh, you don't put a treasurer's report or other committee reports? No, those, those were, so there have been several um, uh, revisions to the bylaws. There was 
one in 2019, one in 2021, um, and and those were removed a long time ago. Okay, well, I'll just, and then also on the certificate, unless something's wrong, it says that- I'm, the, I'm sorry, where are you at? Uh, uh, page six of nine. Okay, and thank I, you. I, and I'm so good, I had the old one and I was juxtaposing it with the new one, so I'm telling yes. you. Yes, so the one, the amendment that says amendment August 21st, 2023, that was um, when I originally did it. So that date is incorrect. It would be whenever this passes. Okay, but it also says certificate and it says that the above bylaws of Northampton. Here it says the regular meeting on April 26, 2001. And then in the end, it says April 28, 2021. Yes. So that date, that date will become whatever, uh, whenever it passes. And then, um, and then the, the amended dates at the bottom, um, it's June 10th, April 26th. And then if it passes today, that August 21st, 23 would become today's date. But thank you for pointing that out because I had forgotten that the certificate at the top has the date in the top. Okay, well, I think that that's all I have. I just had another question, but about the September meeting, I know we had a special meeting. I'm still confused about that. So, but I, that's another thing. I just wanted that to, all the corrections are made. What's the word you use? A scriber notes. I like that. But this is a Scrivener's. Time, it's Scrivener's. 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 It's the standard term when there are you know, errors that are really minor that, as you pointed out, plural to be consistent and things like that. I see, uh, Commissioner Cancel, please. Um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, this is more of a question. I'm seeing more of um, edits to the bylaws rather than just Scribner, uh, Scribner um, errors um, being edited. So. It, it, I think it would be helpful if when we when we um, revised our bylaws back in 2021, we were provided previously before the meeting um, a document showing the edits that were made to the bylaws, um, and I recognize that at the time it was um, it was a, a subcommittee that was working on this. Um, but I'm I'm just just by what we're discussing here. I'm seeing more than just script <laughs> notes. There's uh, edits that actually should be discussed with with the entire board. It should be a conversation here. Um, for instance, the treasurer report was on the last um, revised edition, um, and it was taken out. Not that we do that anymore, anyways. Um, uh, every at every monthly meeting, but that's not a Scribner um, error. That's that's editing our bylaws. That's revising our bylaws. I understand, Commissioner Cancel. Can you confirm, please, for me, um, Secretary Leeper, that the previous rendition, the previous re uh, approved rendition by the board of the bylaws, included a treasurer's report? Um, most recent, the most recent that was. So I'm I'm looking. Um, I was asked to remove the things that we weren't doing, um, and we weren't providing. I'm sorry. Uh, before you go on, I'm just looking at timeline. Okay. So, so when we when were you asked to do that? Um, to clean them to clean up any. Oh, okay, I understand. Uh, so so you're saying you're you're agreeing with Commissioner Cancel that the treasurer's report for this was removed in the version of the Scrivener's errors prior to your, prior to tonight, prior to our approval tonight, there is in our bylaws, an item that says treasurer's report. So I'm looking, um, uh, I'm looking at page four. It was the April, not... 2021, the April, 2021 bylaws. Do they include an item no. that says treasurer's report? Not on no, not in okay. the do they when do we go back to when they included a treasurer's report? Is it 2019? I, I believe it's 2019 or it could be even before that. Okay, so I, I don't want to get too far ahead. So at some point when we approved, when the board approved the bylaws in April of 2021, two years ago. I'll have to I, I'd have to look, although okay. Um, I'll ask then why don't I ask? I'm gonna ask 
just for purposes to let us really have time to look at this, I'm going to ask folks if they'd like to continue this Scrivener's Errors um, discussion, because there's things to look up. Director Leeper has to look up when the treasurer's report was exact, exact, because that's the only example. I don't know if there are other examples. So, so um, yeah, there, are other, there are other examples, and that's a great um, idea. I think it would be great. I'm fine. I'm fine with us, uh, and I'll ask then. It, it looks like, um, Madam Chair, I just, I saw my note here. It looks like it was in the order of business and manner of voting, but because we didn't have that committee anymore, um, it, it was taken out. But yes, I do see that it was on there before in the 2021 minutes um, and oh. taken out because it's not practice. Okay, I understand. What you're saying is that the board approved uh, bylaws of April 2021, which are the last official ones that our board approved entirely, includes a treasurer's report among some other things. So yeah. it would be better rather than submit this document as a Scrivener's error to maybe continue this item till the next meeting if folks, and so I'll ask if Commissioner Cancel or anyone wants to put that forward as a motion. Yeah, so moved. Is second. there a second? And seconded Commissioner Tarbutton. I'll ask the uh, for discussion around that. Is, is there any discussion around postponing that? Uh, oh, Commissioner Tarbutt. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, well, is you know, I would love to have. I can't, I can't, we can't hear you very hear you. well, Commissioner Tarbutton. You can't hear me? Yeah, no. it just became very strange for a moment. It's the ghost. But I said, you know, this is why I go. would love to have a, a, a committee meeting about this so we can discuss this. I, I and some of the, I, I think I, I don't know what uh, uh, Commissioner Cancel was saying, but in the other one we had, we had the original with the line here so we could see it and do it all together. And it was actually all of us screens going through it all together online, not even here, but it really does be group stuff so we can make sure we understand it exactly what that is. And um, so I think it's to our betterment to try to improve that process. Is there uh, any other discussion regarding continuing this item till the next meeting? Then I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes, this is uh, to a motion to continue the corrected <coughs> Scribner errors in the board bylaws <coughs> to next meeting. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Kinsell. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So that motion carries. And we move on to new business, which is the first item. I'll ask the secretary to read. Yes, this is resolution 2023-10 to accept the quarterly financials ending September 30th as prepared by Gary DePace. The approval of the quarterly operating statements for quarter ending 920, I mean, I'm sorry, 930, 2023. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority wishes to certify the quarter quarterly operating statements as indicated below for each program. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority does hereby approve the 401, 689, and MRVP quarterly operating statements for the quarter ending 930, 2023, as prepared by fee accountant Gary DePace and presented to the board. Further, that the authority and executive director in their name shall be authorized on and after the passing of the resolution to do and perform on behalf of the authority all acts and things required of the authority to fully perform all obligations, and be it resolved that the resolution take effect immediately. Thank you. And may I have a motion, please, from the floor? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Richards. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to approve the resolution. Now I'll open for discussion. Commissioner Tarbutton. Um. Uh, yeah, I also want to say I do appreciate the training that we had on this for um, Gary DePace. I read somewhere in the rules, if that was considered a special meeting, you're only supposed to be talking about that topic. So I think it veered off a little bit. But one of the problems I have with this, and again, I appreciate it, is that it's so very tiny. You know, the, the letter is so tiny that, are, are, does he use Excel? Um, I can, 
because you know I'm on the arts council. We have groups and long things here and money, and then there's a way you can stop it and you can look through it. I mean, it's so much easier to know what's going on. This is very mm -hmm. difficult for me to read and understand. It's not because I don't know, it's because I want to understand fully what I'm doing. And that is, and I do appreciate all of the work that he's done, but it's for that reason that I vote no on this when we get to the vote. But uh, maybe if sometimes, because we're going to have, a, um, if we think of uh, committees and stuff like that, those are some of the things we can talk about. What is the other thing? Access that makes these things where it's not just I, you know, I'm not Sherlock Holmes, you know, to look through this. It's really distracting and I, I have a headache after five minutes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Um, Is there anyone else? Any other discussion on this matter? And anything from The executive director or from Sharon, anything like that? But no, I, our, our, we're, we're supposed to be at 25%. Everything looks really good. Um, we're actually under budget at 17.40% for the overall budget. Um, our travel is um, slightly elevated, but it's due to uh, timing of a bill back to Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority. That'll even out by next quarter. Um, and legal is uh, slightly elevated at 28.68%, uh, and that has to do with bill timing as well. Um, and the insurance line item is elevated by 1.22%, but that's due to increases and it should even out by the end of the quarter. Um, so as far as line items go, we're looking, <laughs> as far as overall budget, we're looking really good. Um, we're under, uh, given, especially given the circumstances that we faced uh, during this first uh, period, um, uh, but the items that are off will even out by next quarter. Thank you for that clarification. Yes. Before I go back to Commissioner Tarbutton, Commissioner Cantel, please. Uh, yeah, I just have a question regarding the travel um, that you mentioned, Director Lieber. Um, what does that uh, What does that entail? Like, um, like gas or or. Uh, no, so that's um, 4150 for travel would be mileage reimbursement to employees, or it could be training, it could be um, a number of things. Although in this particular instance, um, we paid an employee uh, reimbursement and did the bill back and it's just kind of crossed in the, um, you know, like the reports were printed before they paid us back for that. And so really once that happens, we'll be under 2% on that particular line item. Um, and so it's it's truly just a timing thing. Um, no, but I'm sorry. I, I don't understand uh, who's paying back what. I, I don't understand what what is the expense for for that travel. So expense could be something like an employee goes to a conference and they get mileage reimbursement or an employee goes to cover um, uh, goes to, you know, from one property to another. We're required by law to reimburse their travel expenses when they're driving their own car. And so in this particular um, financial, um, we have an employee that received reimbursement for travel. Um, and it needs to be billed back to the other agency, which it's been billed back, but it hasn't been paid yet. It'll be paid when they do bills this week. And it's just a matter of um, whether or not, uh, it was a matter of these reports being printed out before they cut the check. Uh, okay. I, can't, I, I think I understand a little bit more, um, but I'm wondering about, um, about usage of 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 uh, the housing vehicles and stuff like that. Is it somebody? Can we just if somebody rather than reimburse them, can they just drive the housing authority vehicle to the place? In 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 most where we can do that, we do. Um, but in uh, some instances, we can't do that. Um, uh, and and in this particular case, we were not able to do that. Okay, um, and it's not it's not a Northampton Housing Authority expense, although it's oh, paid, okay. it's it's paid to Northampton how it's paid to a Northampton Housing Authority employee, but it will be reimbursed from another housing authority because it's not really a Northampton Housing Authority expense. It's just in the middle of it's in the middle of that process of reimbursement, so that's why you're seeing an overage. 
I get it. I get it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. I'll go back then to Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Well, Commissioner Cancel had me thinking about something here based on what he asked the uh, director. Um, because, uh, well, I'll, I'll do one thing. Firstly, in this one, that's uh, uh, September 30th, the, the mileage include uh, tenants who got, who got to go to an LTO convention that was in Central Mass. Is that gonna no. be on the next quarter? Um, I, I can't discuss individual people with you guys. Um, yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, I can't discuss individual stuff with you. Well, the only reason why I said is because I've been begging for reimbursements going to training and I never got it. And I'm happy because I do think that makes us all, you know, knowledge is power. I just felt I never got it, but I wouldn't have went this uh, time because, you know, I'm living with unwanted visitors and I would not want to give that to someone else. If not, if it's not outside, I won't go, but I did miss it. And I have paid for my own exp uh, expenses for a lot. And it's cost a lot for me to have to do that to get training and to learn these things. So, and I was really surprised when someone said that you would pay for it. I'm not asking for anybody's name, but if you're paying for a training to one event for one resident, and not the other, it, you know, it's just. It so, so that we're clear, um, so that the whole board is clear. What I did was, is I sent the, um, uh, the potential chair and vice chair of the upcoming tenants association at Walter Salvo to the set, to the national, um, tenants association, um, meeting um which they found to be very helpful um and uh that's what i what i sent them on but i can't discuss the specifics of that um and we were recognized um uh, as were the other housing authorities that we oversee we were recognized by them for sending people to the, to yeah. that um mass it's mass union um, through the chair please before you ask another question do you have another question Commissioner, who are you talking to? I'm sorry. For the, uh, do you have another question, Commissioner? Tarbell? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, then another question for you, Secretary Lieber, through the chair to you. I'll, I'll defer and let uh, Commissioner Council because that just confused me. Like oh, that. oh, before just so people aren't confused when we, you know, just so we know that all questions come to the to me through through the chair to the I get that mm -hmm. I'm okay. sorry that's my fault I apologize no 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 I I just want to want it to be clear so please continue Commissioner Tarbutton with your questions please well just give me a moment can, can I defer to a uh, council um Commissioner Kinsel? oh you want to go no I'd rather you ask your question now because I don't want to go back and forth there are other people okay who, please. okay sure thank you well the thing was I just wanted to clarify it wasn't a national uh thing it's a it's a by annual uh, convention conference for the Mass Union of Public Housing Tenants. And as I told you, I have been to those and I agree, it is great. And I'm sure when I went there the first time, they were just, there was nobody there. Actually, as a matter of fact, there was an employee who went there. That's how I got to meet first. And I got to meet her. So there was there. And then there's sometimes you know, uh, executive directors that go there. And it's, 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 it's really a wonderful thing. You learn a lot from that. And I went, and if I could have went this time, I would have. I didn't know you were paying some people or whatever the case may be, but I wanted to go. And I had a hard time deciding whether or not I wanted to even get on the LTO board, but I'm excited as a board member here, but I'm excited that other people are doing this and I would like to support them. But so just wanted to get that. It's, and uh, I'm very happy that it got recognized as of the seventh. And um, I think that's really great. I just, I just, you know, and I went to board trainings. You know, you we paid for a board training. I couldn't go to it because the a phone kept dropping. We're not talking about board training now, please. No, I'm just saying we pay for that training. Okay. Yes, valuable. but please just please just refer to the executive director's report. Her report. Her report. She was not referring to board training, but staff training. I'm sorry, but LTO training. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, LTO and training. So, um, and. I yeah. There's one. Is there that. something more about the LTO no. going to the no, training? No, no, no. Go ahead, uh, Chair. No, go ahead. Thank you. No, I I do want to make sure you've asked all your questions before I go to.
Commissioner Cancel. We'll take a moment. Done. Commissioner Cancel, please. Yeah, I had another question about um, about travel. I'm going back to that because I just realized that I do see a lot of people uh, from a lot of staff uh, from uh, not a lot of staff. I've seen some staff that take the vehicles home. Um, that would increase our, our total. In fact, actually, I think I've seen somebody who doesn't even, I've never even met. He looks a lot like Commissioner Jones. I don't think it's Commissioner Jones, but it's somebody that kind of looks like that who I've never met. I don't even think they work for the housing authority. Um, but I do have, I have seen uh, some employees take, take the vehicles home. Is that common practice? So before, before I go to Director Lieber, regarding regarding whether and people taking vehicles home and whatnot, this is not part of the director's the director's report that speaks to the travel expenses that were described, which were for LTO people to attend a conference, et cetera. I understand that you have questions generally about whether staff members are able to take vehicle home vehicles home or whether as a policy we have this and so i just ask um director lieber do you is there something that you can do to clarify regarding the policy that we have in terms of staff members who use nha vehicles so um Really, we're supposed to be talking about the, the financials only, um, and the uh, attorney just reminded me about that, uh, but I will just inform you that part of the union contract is someone, anyone that's on call gets to uh, utilize an, a Northampton Housing Authority vehicle um, to be on call. Uh, so in addition to the master plumber, um, but I can't go into any more because it's not on the agenda. Okay. And can you tell us who it is that looks like Jeff Jones? I'm only kidding. I'm joking about that. Commissioner Cantel, please. Further question? Uh, yeah, no. Um, the travel expense expense that Director Deeper mentioned what had, didn't have only to do with the LTO expenses. It was something. So the, the, the travel <laughs> expenses do not include have anything to do with the uh, employees driving vehicles or vehicles at, at all for that. It's a, it's not even in it's not even in that line item. Does that clarify it a little bit better, Commissioner? Can, can I'll, I'll ask you. I'll ask you to better clarify. Does that line item include other items regarding travel? that need to be clarified for Commissioner Cancel. He asked about staff taking vehicles, et cetera. Because I know, I understand that Attorney O'Connor has some concerns whether we stray away from what's posted on the agenda. And so travel, uh, um, the on-call usage of vehicles does not fall on that budget line item. The on-call usage of vehicles by staff does not fall under that line item line item. I'll ask you then to clarify, what does that line item include beyond what you've mentioned? Hold on just a moment. I can look. It, I can actually- Take your time. Take your time. We'll, we'll yeah. all sit back and take a break. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you happen to have that, uh, Sharon, um, handy? Yeah, the 4150 account really is- Thank you. Handy. Thank you, Sharon. No problem. Please. Um, Go ahead. It's, it's mainly mileage. So we we like our RRCs, they just went to an event. Um, and so traveling from where they would be housed, meaning working for the day and going maybe into Springfield or wherever the conference would be, they could get mileage because they're, they weren't, they don't, we can't give, we don't have three NHA cars to give to all of them. So they'd be using their own vehicles. But this particular person, it had nothing to do with NHA employee. Um, well, it has to do with Hampshire County that owes us back the money for the reimbursement for mileage. No, but Sharon, um, what they're asking, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, what they're asking is, is do you have the little cheat sheet that we have uh, that tells us 
what belongs under our count 4150. Well, There's I don't have it in front of me to read it, what DHCD says. Okay. That's what I was asking you. Right, but it's my but it's mainly mileage or out of town items that have to do with conventions. Okay, I'm not sure that that satisfies the commissioner. So we can sit back if you want to pull it up on your computer. Yeah, let me pull it up. Let's sit back. <clears throat> oh. We go under the guidelines, it's there, Kara. All the accounts, the budget. Yeah, but I didn't want to have to do that. I'm just pulling I'm, it. Give yeah, me a minute, please. I get it. It's I'm okay. Back. We're in no hurry. We're all sitting back. So, um, Public Housing Notice 2021-20, Addendum 1, announced, um, all, uh, informed all housing authorities that the rate of reimbursement for private auto mileage traveled in the course of the authority business um, increased from 45 cents to 58 and one half cents. The effective date of the increase was March 20th, 22. Um, but let me just try to, um, I want to pull up, there's, I have a cheat sheet in my office that talks. No, sorry, about, we're just going to wait. Uh, <clears throat> and it is line item 4150, 4150. Okay. Um, thank you so much for sending that to me, Lisa. I can always count on you for getting things to me at the tip of my fingers. So I don't know if you can hear me, but if you can, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. Um, uh, travel and related expenses, 4150. Travel practices and policies are to be consistent with department policy. Legitimate travel expenses incurred by board members or staff in the discharge of their duties and any state-aided program are reimbursable from the accounts based upon the following considerations. Registration fees for conferences are allowed under reasonable number of LHA members and the executive director. Charges for overnight accommodations are allowable if the conference is located at a site 40 miles from the community where the LHA is located. If the room is being rented by the LHA and is being occupied by a husband and wife, one of whom is not associated with the LHA, the allowable reimbursement amount is based upon the single occupancy. The difference between the single and double occupancy is borne by the individual a LHA member or staff member. Private auto mileage incurred in the course of the authority business is reimbursable. Um, in addition, reasonable associated costs for parking or tolls or authorized business travel are reimbursable. A flat rate either calculated on a weekly or monthly basis for the business use of private vehicle is not allowable under any circumstances. When the employee uses an authority-owned vehicle for travel, reimbursement for tolls or parking is permissible as long as parking charges are, re are reasonable and covered solely for the period during which business was conducted. Uh, all state-funded authority-owned vehicles must uh, be prominently marked with the authority name. In addition to such vehicle must be Garage at the authority, exceptions to this rate must have uh, prior written approval from uh, the director of the Bureau of Housing Management. Reimbursement for meals is also in this line item. Breakfast, um, $4 maximum. Uh, lunch, $7.50 maximum. Uh, That's all really helpful, Director Leeper, for us to know. But I don't think it answers the commissioner's question who wants to know specifically I think, am, am I wrong, Commissioner Cancel? You want to know specifically. Please clarify if I'm wrong. Uh, actually, everything that she read was very, very um, helpful. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the answer. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> and that is helpful, Director Leeper. So uh, what you're saying is that all of these items, as we all know, are lumped into that They're regulated and they're in the regulations that show us what expenses can be set. But it's and helpful for us. It's, it's helpful for us in the moment to be able to know that we can look those up, and probably a, you know we can look those up to make sure when we look through the things. But I know we don't have time tonight because we will we will have to move this forward tonight. But I hope that's helpful. And for commissioners, if you you know when we sent you the budget. Um, guidelines, um, you'll find the account explanations in the budget guidelines each year, um, if that's helpful. Or, you know, if you want to talk with me about it, please feel free to give me a call. 
Thank you. Director Lieber, and one more thing I, I just want to mention is that, you know, anything regarding the board really does not have to do with these things here regarding whether we have expenses paid for board members, et cetera. Those are, those are a different, a whole different world, and we need to deal with those as a board. I think uh, uh, we typically approve those for board members, and if we go to, not that I remember ever, and if there has ever been, you know, full board attendance at some conference somewhere else, but that's a different matter. And so I'll go back then to Commissioner Tarbutton again, please. I have a lot to say, but I won't. But I just thought. No, well, please you're, tell us all. You're, you're, um, well, last time I had to say about that, and I just think that, and, and then just what you read is what when I took a class and it said that, that I should be reimbursed. That's why I was so surprised I wasn't reimbursed. And I gave it in a timely manner. And I just, where's goodwill here when we're dealing with that? So I just want that to be clear. But I know we're talking about person use their own vehicles, but I wondered on a weekend, I'm actually was very happy for attendance, but on a weekend, an administrator came in, company car with a relative, and I was like, hmm. And I just like, that. I know you can say probably it's business with this, but this was a social event that I was there. And I'm glad for the uh, attendance. I'm glad that being a part of what's going on in the community, but it was just, I just want, you know, things that make you go, hmm. That's why I'm thinking about these things. And that's it. Madam Chair, would you like me to um, address that? No. Um, I, you're muted, Madam Chair. Yes, please, if you'd like. Okay. So um, I do drive a, a Northampton Housing Authority vehicle. <laughs> and it is approved by um, DHCD and HUD. It's part of the contract, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Um, and so um, it's because I am on call 24 seven. And so it is part of the budget, part of the contract, and it is approved by the state and the feds and the board. Does that include gas? Uh, 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 Chair, can I ask, does that include gas and other expenses? Is that taken care of in the contract? Well, I think the whole vehicle expense is and has historically been for as long as I know. I mean, I was on the Housing Authority 30 years ago. It's always been covered as an expense for the executive director. Do they have cars then? <laughs> Buggies. Sorry. No, well, I mean, with the horse and buggy, you had to oh, feed the okay. horse. You had to. So all that stuff that. that we had to pay for then. Madam Chair, um, uh, Commissioner Jones Please. has his hand raised. I didn't know if you knew that or not. I didn't know, and I was just saying that. So thanks for letting me see that. Commissioner Jones, please. I call a question. Thank you. Madam Chair, would you like me to call the roll? Well, given that the question has been called, and that's usually what we do when that happens, please Thanks. call the roll, Secretary. Thank you. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Kinsell. I'm confused. What are we voting on? <laughs> Re resolution. Well, the resolution that we've been talking about, which is the financial order. Oh, that, okay. Yes, just, yes. Oh, yeah. let's take a moment. Let's all just come back and know where we are. Yeah. <laughs> so that we don't have that confusion to know where we're voting. Let's just take 10 seconds. We'll count down. Would you like me to read the uh, motion again? Yes, please. Resolution 2023-10, accept the quarterly financials ending September 30th, 2023, as prepared by Gary DePace. Chairperson Carney gave me a yay. Vice, Chair Vice Chairperson Cancel? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks? Uh, yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield? <coughs> No, for the reasons I mentioned. Commissioner Richards. You're muted. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Thank you, no problem. Thank you. Okay, so uh, did you call everyone? Yes, ma'am, I did. That That motion carries, thank you. Thank you. The next is we have the proposed amendment to the bylaws for the governance and policy committee. People have that language in the 
board resources. Um, I uh, and so I'd ask. Uh, oh, well, if you if you have it in front of you, I do, Secretary Leeper. Yes. Could you, read, could you read that and then I'll I'll move forward. Would you like me to read the 2019 bylaw language and then the attorney recommended language or just the attorney recommended language? I think it makes sense to read both because folks may not have those in front of them. I, I myself mm -hmm. have to keep switching screens, but yes. it would be helpful, I think. Okay, so this would go in on page three, article four. It would become number two and number two would then become number three. Uh, it previously read in 2019, Governance and Policy Committee. The Governance and Policy Committee will have two board members and will be responsible for board orientation, developing policy recommendations, developing and carrying out a plan and process for evaluating the executive director, nominating officers for the annual meeting, review and make revisions of bylaws as necessary, and respond to other personnel issues not charged to the Grievance Committee. The C section three below, the committee will meet as necessary. Um, the attorney reviewed that language and found that it was problematic in that um, uh, anyone could uh, make um, nominations. Um, it didn't go with your what your processes have been. In addition to that, um, it put charge of certain things just with that committee, not with the whole board. Dr. Um, Leaker, is it okay if we actually defer to um, just for clarification? I can't, I, I can Porter. defer to attorney O'Connor in just a moment. Um, if you wouldn't mind letting me read his recommended language first, and then I'll deter to him Please. to explain why. So um, 2023 attorney recommended language governance and policy committee. Governance and policy committee will have two members and be responsible for making recommendations to the board for approval on all matters relating to the governance and policy of the agency. Uh, Attorney O'Connor, if you could, um, and I have the original and the your recommend recommended typed in front of me. So if you need me to remind you on any of the particular items, I can. But if you could please speak to the board about the reasoning behind your changing of the verbiage. Sure, a, a couple reasons. The first was I found it problematic to limit the committee's role to just those items that are listed in that old description. Because what if the committee wanted to look at something that was not one of the tasks listed in that old description, they would arguably be beyond the purview of their authority. So I just essentially, in my opinion, broadened it so they can um, review anything that deals with governance and policy. And then I made it clear that they then had to go back to the board for approval. So the whole purpose of any of these committees are to do legwork for the board, to then go back to the board for approval or further guidance. Um, so that's what I was trying to do with, with those amendments. Essentially, not limit the committee, broaden, make clear that they have to go back to the board for the board's approval. Thank you, Attorney O'Connor. So before we go further with discussion, I don't think we heard a motion. So I'll ask, is there a motion from the floor? Motion to approve the amended language. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Richards. Is there a second for purpose of discussion? Second. I moved and seconded. Uh, that was Commissioner Richards, Commissioner Brooks. Okay, so now we'll have discussion. I see Commissioner Cancel, then Commissioner Tarbutton, and we'll go on. Commissioner Cancel, please. Yes, okay, so I definitely like um, the concept that the attorney is talking about here, um, but I will say that uh, it, it, the way it reads to me, it actually takes away the, the specificity of what we're talking about in that previous language that we had before. So I would propose that rather than eliminating that, saying exactly what the attorney is proposing, all um, uh, business, um, and then list the examples, such as make revisions of the bylaws as necessary, respond to other personal issues. So that's, that's what I would um, propose. 
uh, just so people know, we can amend anything that comes, uh, you know, with Robert's rules. People can propose a friendly amendment of what or whatnot to whatever motion has been presented. So I'm not sure, Commissioner Cancel, are you offering that as a friendly amendment? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I'd have to ask those that made the motion and the second if they accept that as a friendly amendment. That's Commissioner Richards and seconded by Commissioner Brooks. And just so, you, so you're clear, I think what Commissioner Cancel is saying is to introduce what we have presently, or not presently, but what was in existence in 2019 as a governance and policy committee that was described as such in 2019. He's asking, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we instead of just adopting that other, that language proposed, but to have that prior to. So that would be the first, that would be, those would be the first sentences in that description of the committee, followed by what existed in 2019. Am I correct, Commissioner Cancel? Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So I'd ask then, I, I need to ask, because it was offered as a friendly amendment, if those that offered the motion and seconded would accept as a friendly amendment? Sure. Um, I, I guess I would say I don't quite get it, because that would take us back to the original amendment that our attorney has advised, advised us against. So I, I think what, what Commissioner Cancel is saying is that we would have all of the language that Attorney O'Connor recommended in that description of the committee. And then it would follow by those descriptions of the items. But as you suggested, there may be still some issues there. And so I'll, I'll continue to ask before, because we're speaking only to the amendment now only to the amendment, which is to include the recommended language by the attorney, followed by the previous 2019 language. And I'll ask a clarifying question. How long did this committee? Um, it was until 2021 or until 2020 or? Uh, it, it, it really only met, um, it, it only met two times um, and um, the attorney. I just need the time frame. How long it existed? Less a year. Less, less than two years. Okay, year and a half. Let's say. Okay, so um, so we're asking if the attorney recommended language could be tagged on in front of what's described as the committee for the iteration that it existed in 2019 to 2020, and that would be. Um, so we're speaking only to the amendment now, only to the amendment. And yeah. So, so the oh. I'm sorry. I want to be clear, Chair um, Carney, that um, the the original language, um, which uh, which your attorney at the time had not um, reviewed, has stated that it's problematic, and that he is recommending that this. Um, language that he gave me, which I typed up, um, replace that and become your new grievance and policy committee because it encompasses anything that has to do with governance or I understand no no before we go board. before we go on to the we should just follow the procedure, which would be if there is a friendly amendment offered and the motion offerer and second agree, then we would have discussion then on that friendly amendment if 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 those folks agree. If not, then there would be a vote on the friend, it would become an unfriendly amendment, <laughs> not unfriendly, but it would be a vote on the amendment that then the, if it's so offered and seconded. So uh, just to keep up with where we're at procedurally, I'd ask then if, um, Again, if the motion maker and the second, I heard the second said yes. What about the motion maker? Um, I, I say um, I would go with the attorney's recommendation. So that would be no. 
Okay. So given that it's a no from the from the maker of the motion to accept that amendment, it still can be offered as an amendment and then voted on by the body and moved on. So um, do you want to offer that as an amendment then, as a amendment, Commissioner Cancel, to the motion? Not that we would vote on is whether to accept the amendment that you're making, which is to have the attorney's language followed by the 2019 language. Is that the motion you would like to offer? Well, you know, if we can take the time and go, you know, item by item in this in this paragraph that we're talking about to amend. We can do that if you I offer it. Would, I, we can only do it. Good. We can only do it if you offer it as amendment and have a second, and then we'll discuss it. So if you want to offer that as I already, an amendment, I already offered the amendment, and it seems no, like but you offered it as a friendly amendment. It's different now. It's not friendly. You have to offer it as an amendment, not as friendly amendment, but as a new amendment. To <laughs> Yeah. So I thought we were that, having a discussion already. So that yes, no, we can't have the discussion without you offering the motion. Just offer the motion. But we I'll have, offer it if you don't want to. Well, no, listen to me. We there was there was there was a vote. There was a vote to um have a discussion and, and it was seconded. So we're having the discussion. No. There wasn't a vote to have discussion. There was a vote to offer a friendly amendment. No, before that, before that. And then you offered a friendly amendment and it was not. So if you want to add anything else besides the lawyer's language that was offered, you have to offer a new amendment. Let me, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so See, this, is, this, is, um, this is why I had suggested before, like we really should have a subcommittee looking at these so that when we present it to the rest of the board, all of these things are, you know, like we would work with the attorney, but this is more like the attorney writing whatever he thinks. And then we have to, um, we have to either approve it or not, right? But we, uh, we were in the middle of having a discussion, so we can't approve it if we don't have the discussion about it. However, you offered a friendly amendment. Cool. That friendly amendment was rejected by the maker of the motion. By one. That was the second. No, no. It doesn't require a vote of the whole board to reject the friendly no, but amendment. but there was two people. There was, no, was, let's I'm not go back and forth. Let's not go but back I'm, asking, I'm telling you. I'm clarifying you. I'm correcting you. Two out of the people that suggested this, one of them said yes, and the other said no. One of them offered the... Um, I understand, like, Commissioner okay. Kinsell. However, under Robert's rules, it's the maker of the motion that must accept the friendly amendment. I'm so sorry that but, you didn't understand that. You thought it was mm -hmm. one and one, but it's not. The maker of the motion... And then if the maker of the motion accepts it, then the seconder of the of the motion needs to also accept the friendly amendment for us to move forward. And I'm sorry. Want a clarification? Confusing. No, 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 not right yet. I'm not finished. And then I'll and then I'll go to your point of clarification. Under Robert's rules, what has to happen if there is a friendly amendment is the maker of the motion must accept that amendment. And the second must also, and I understand that Commissioner Brooks did readily accept, and that's great. But unfortunately, the maker of the motion did not accept and had some issues with that. So instead, it doesn't mean we can't still move forward and have a vote on the exact same motion you made, the exact same amendment you made. But at this point, we would have to vote on it as the entire board would have discussion first. Lots of discussion before 11, because people have to call for their meals for the Mana Soup Kitchen. But we'd have lots of discussion before then. So if you would please just offer the emotion, emotion then, again, then so we moved. can have further discussion. So moved. 
Yeah, you just offer the same motion. It's not a friendly amendment because that maker of the motion and uh, uh, declined to accept as a friendly amendment. So that means we go now to you offering a motion, which would be seconded. And then we have discussion and vote on that amendment that you would like to have. Second. Can you repeat the motion? Well, hold on. No, Commissioner Cancel has not yet um, offered the motion. Right. So when Commissioner Cancel offers the motion and it is seconded, we'll have discussion on that motion. We'll vote on it and then we'll move on. So I'm going to sit back and wait. I don't understand what motion you want me to offer. Okay, uh, let me let me say again. The mo you offered a motion about 15 minutes ago, and you said, I'd like to have the attorney's language tagged on to the 2019 language. Well, no, that's not exactly what I said. What I said was that the attorney's um, uh, language um, took out a lot of what I thought was a lot of the specific tasks uh, for this committee. I understand your reasoning. Okay. It's not your time to give your reasoning now. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying that you're you're saying the wrong thing. I didn't say that. I didn't say tag along. Say I how said, would you how would you like? We already know okay. your friendly I amendment would, has been rejected. If you'd okay. like a different amendment, please offer. Okay. So I would like to offer us an amendment to have the previous language that we had as the task for this governance and policy committee um, still included with the uh, language that the uh, attorney offered. I'd like you and, to clarify. Would and you, it, would you I'm, like that language that. before or to, after? I'm about to do that, but you interrupted me. Excuse me, I'm sorry. In the, and the way that we can do that is, um, as I said before, such as, and then include the tasks of that committee. Because the attorney suggested that we, we use language that, that includes all, but in the way that I see it, I see that it excludes everything. It could, it could, um, seem as excluding the previous language rather than being inclusive, which is what his goal is. So my proposal is to use the previous language um, just after his, his proposed language. I understand. And now because that was rejected by the motion maker, would you like to offer that as an amendment that would be voted on by the entire board? I would. So moved. So moved. Is there a second, please? Seconded by Commissioner Targo. Discussion, please. I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Targo, go ahead. Oh my God, we had a lot of stuff saying. We said a lot. We talked a lot, but I don't know exactly what we said. But I, 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 I understand, you know, I mean, I appreciate your uh, Robert's Rue's um, uh, knowledge, a bit of a institutionalist with this. Can't just, do that. Call me Robert... Ro just call me Miss Robert's Rules. Sorry. <laughs> but Robert's Rules, I mean, today we can amend it. I, I, it's like, it has to be this, because if it had to be, the, you know, Robert didn't want me to be here uh, when he wrote the rules. So it's that exclusion thing. But go ahead if you want to do that. But you're the chair and you can say, although this does this, I can let this go there. I wish that would happen other than, no, I said it, you have to do it. It just doesn't feel right to me. I'm so sweaty underneath here. And I think what Commissioner Cassell is saying, and I had my hand up for the longest trying to say it, we appreciate having the attorney with us, but he works with us. He doesn't tell us. We don't want him directing things to tell us what to do. That doesn't feel comfortable. and It doesn't feel inclusionary. And it feels like I just get nervous. And I even want to know what the conversation is going on between the, you know, the, the attorney and the uh, ED now, but it doesn't feel like it's the board. It feels like, you know, we have a management team or you have these people going through that. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel inclusive. And I appreciate the knowledge base that he has. And if it's, to, but why can't we have a committee? We as a board, we're the board. We're the board. He's not the board. Thank you. 
You're muted. Thanks, Commissioner Tarbutton. So just so folks know, the motion on the floor is to amend the original motion made by Commissioner Richards, seconded by Commissioner Brooks, which was to adopt the language. And it was, we've asked for an amendment that was seconded. And we're now we're in discussion on that amendment to vote on by the whole board, just the amendment. We're voting on just the amendment and discussing just the amendment, which is as Commissioner Cancel clarified, to have the attorney's recommended language followed by the 2019 language. Madam Chair, I don't know if you can see, but um, Commissioner Jones has his hand raised. Oh, I see everyone. I see everyone's hand raised. Okay. All right. Well, everyone, including only. Oh, okay. So I, I see Commissioner Jones, then please, followed by Commissioner Richards. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I think um, my interpretation of this language is both of these paragraphs are not compatible with one another. And if you look at the 2019 law language, you will see that it talks about governance and policy committee and the way it's written, it, it, it can be interpreted and I interpret it that the policy and governance committee and they alone um, develop and carry out a plan and process for evaluating the ED, that committee alone nominates officers for the annual meeting and that's not what the second paragraph is striving to do because anything the policy and governance committee might do is taken back to the board for approval um, and the first part of that 2019 language mentions developing policy recommendations and then all of a sudden the word recommendation disappears from the rest of that paragraph. So on that basis, I am against uh, fusing these two paragraphs together and I basically revert to the suggested language um, the uh, attorney O'Connor brought forward. And I think it's perfectly reasonable to list some of these items in the first paragraph, which is where I think Commissioner Cancel was going. And you could list those in the second paragraph by saying such as um, this and this and this, um, but ma make clear that that does not exhaust the possible list of things that that committee could look at. And I'll leave it there. I understand. And I'll ask then, because we still, now we have an amendment on the floor and any commissioner can offer a friendly amendment to Commissioner Cancel and to his second, Commissioner Tarbutton, regarding the language that he offered, which is the proposed attorney language followed by the 2019 language. I heard Commissioner Jones allude to some issues there, but not offering an, an amendment per se to Commissioner Cancel, a friendly amendment. So I'll then, I see, oh, sorry, Commissioner Richards. <laughs> Oh, God, yes. Um, I'm still a little confused, but um, I I have to say I totally agree with uh, Commissioner Jones. And uh, the past practice has been that the committee has come to the board uh, as a recommendation. So uh, if Commissioner Jones, uh, who is on this issue much more articulate than I am, uh, would like to offer a, a friendly amendment. Um, I, I totally get it, but I I can't support the amendment. We, we have a lawyer for a reason, and that's to keep us out of uh, doo doo. And uh, I always appreciate that. So um, thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Richards. I, I will point out that we heard some great things from Commissioner Jones just now that there is a possible solution if folks want to offer an amendment, which is to kind of put a colon somewhere and list those things that are, as Commissioner Cancel specified in that original 2019 language, but in such a way that does not um, 
does not insinuate that that committee alone should develop and implement executive director report or nominate officers in a way that it left out the other members. So I, again, I'm not going to offer the amendment myself, but if there were people that wanted to, that is even the maker of the motion himself could offer an, an amendment in such a way that it would satisfy the maker of the motion. So moved. Please specify the way, you, the thing is, and, and I appreciate that, and I'll ask for a second, but I'd, I just ask you to specify, and it just takes us a moment and we'll sit back to look at the language and see how you would put a colon or put a, sent, a, a period after the recommended attorney language and then list those things that you would like the committee to consider specified because you said that because they were specified, it was important to have them listed. Specify those things that the committee would consider. And then I'm, I'm, it's sounding to me that that's the amendment that I'm hearing. You would like a couple of commissioners. And so I'm going to go back then to, I know you said so moved, Commissioner Cancel, but you need to be a little more specific. I'll go to you. Okay. So um, I can be more specific. Just for clarification for everybody, I would like to ask um, Director Leeper to read again the proposed language from Attorney O'Connor, which, by the way, I really liked. I'm so sorry. Um, so the attorney recommended language for the governance and policy committee says governance and policy committee will have two members and will be responsible for making recommendations to the board for approval on all matters relating to the governance and policy of the agency. Great, thank you. You're welcome. So my, um, uh, I would like to um, uh, put forth a motion to uh, amend uh, the recommended uh, language by the attorney uh, to include um, uh, uh, after uh, after his paragraph to include uh, items uh, to read such as developing and carrying out a plan and process for evaluating the executive director, review and make revisions of the laws, the bylaws as necessary, and respond to other personal issues not charged to the grievance committee. The committee will meet as necessary. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. If you're making that as an amendment to your own motion, that's fine. I just ask if the second agrees to that amendment. The second was, I'm sorry. Oh, it was Commissioner Tarbutton. Can you just say if you, can you just unmute and just say, Yes. Yes. Okay. So the maker of the motion has amended the motion to include those items if the secretary has been able to take those down. Yes. Okay. So and and so do we need people to read them again or does that is that clear enough to people that the motion by the maker of the motion and the second has been amended to include the language that Commissioner Cancel just described. Okay, so nobody's confused about that. And so then now the motion is as described by Commissioner Cancel, which is the attorney language followed by those specific, specific um, duties, I guess. Uh, and Examples, yeah. Examples. Yeah. Would it be better if if that's if that's actually read so that you're clear, Commissioner Cancel, that the secretary has it? Could you read it, please, Secretary Leeper? Yeah. So, um, governance and policy committee will have two members and will be responsible for making recommendations to the board for approval on all matters relating to governance and policy of the agency, such as developing policy recommendations 
developing and carrying out a plan and process for evaluating the executive director, nominating officers for the annual meeting, review and make revisions of the bylaws as necessary, and respond to other personnel issues not charged to the grievance committee. <clears throat> See section three below. The committee will meet as necessary. Thank you. Does that does that reflect what you wanted, Commissioner? Uh, no, it actually included more than I um, that I proposed. Um, for instance, I did not add nominating officers for the annual meeting because that's something that we just don't do. Right, that through. Okay. Um, and um, uh, but everything else. Okay. Yep. So just not the nominations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's that's good. Yeah, and it's it's always been my understanding, by the way, that any committee that we have always comes to the board for approval on anything. They just do the legwork, the the extra meat stuff. Like, um, for instance, again, I think if we would have done that before, it, this meeting wouldn't be as long. But at the beginning here, it started to look like the attorneys recommended something. We just want to go with that. We don't want to have a discussion. But now we just had a discussion, and that's where I was going. We finally had a discussion as a board about what we think should, you know, the language and about what we want to do with our bylaws. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. That that really I think clarifies it for people. And I know there's further discussion. And I, and please don't apologize for the length. Because we're not we're not a really long meeting tonight. I mean, I know some meetings are 27 minutes or whatever, but we have a lot of public comment. We have a lot of things to consider, and this is important. So I want us to go on then with the board discussion, and that is for Commissioner Richards and then Commissioner. And the reason I'm asking Commissioner Richards is she hasn't spoken on this matter, this amended matter yet. And then to oh, actually, Commissioner Richards, if you're wait, the second of the motion that goes first. Uh, Commissioner I'll, Tarbutton, I'll... You'll, you'll defer. Commissioner Tarbutton, please, the second of the motion. Yes. Well, I just want to say uh, you've heard so many people say I'm confused, I'm confused. I just wish we could just table this and get some sleep and think about it. I, I get nervous like buying a car. Do it right now, sound the down line, and that makes me nervous. I feel like it's the same, and then it gets us divided on lines, and it makes me very uncomfortable. So I just want to say that. But the thing is, and I do agree, people say, well, the attorney, we're gonna to refer to attorney, and that's true. But I'm also thinking about, does the attorney think about residents being a part of it? I mean, I, I think about all of that, not just administration and attorney. I just, that's all I'm asking. And for me, this was just like NASCAR going around and around. Not that this is not how things are done here, but I was like, why is this so difficult? And it makes me nervous when something's so simple, why does it have to be so complicated? And so I get very uncomfortable. So why don't we just take a breath here? Maybe some people need to go night, night and then look at it, refresh next. Because if it's like that, why? We can't sleep on it and table it to the next meeting and then come clear and maybe some other discussions. My only objection to it, and I'm gonna say no, is that I, I know we have an attorney and I do think attorney is for administration, stakeholders, that's the community and residents. And I want all those factors in there. Very simple. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Commissioner Richards? Well, first of all, I want to say I think Attorney O'Connor had his hand up, but I just want to say something very simple. I think that um, the amendment is redundant and, in fact, may appear to be limiting, which I wouldn't want to limit uh, the committee, as I, I think that was the intent of. Uh, Commissioner Cancel's uh, amendment. He's already said he agrees that it needs to come back to the board. So I just those think those examples are limiting and redundant. Okay, so I've heard from other other commissioners. Oh, I'm sorry, Attorney O'Connor, and you're always recognized. So please offer your input on this. Thank you. Now my hand is up. Uh, Marilyn hit the nail right on the head. Commissioner Richards did. The whole purpose of my language was to um, basically not limit the um, the board at all. Uh, and I know Commissioner Cancel wants those specific things listed. But as I stated earlier, my concern is if the if that committee were to 
want to review something that's not specifically listed, there would be a very fair argument that they're beyond their authority. So um, Commissioner Richards is spot on. That was the reasoning for my language. And it the, the, the amendment arguably um, limits what the committee can do. And um, I'll certainly respect whatever the board decides to do, but that was the reasoning behind the language I chose. Thank you, Attorney O'Connor. And just to clarify for people, so the amendment offered now by Commissioner Cancel and seconded by Commissioner Tarbutton is to amend the language to have the attorney's recommended language followed by those specific things that the director uh, that the secretary read, which were regarding uh planning and pl the plan and process for the evaluation of the executive director and any personnel matters that wouldn't come before the personnel committee and and maybe and i'd suggest to the commissioner cancel that there could be something that, that would say to include but not to exclude any other to include those things that were described the uh, plan and process for the evaluation of the exec executive director and any personnel committees that wouldn't come, personnel issues that wouldn't come before the personnel committee to, you could, a person could amend then even this language. This is the beauty of Robert's rules. So we can amend as we go on to say, and not to exclude anything else or whatever, however you would like to describe that. And I saw first Commissioner Jones and then Commissioner Cancel. Please, Commissioner Jones. So um, assuming um, nomination of officers is still struck in this particular draft, one could include the phrase, um, instead of such as, you could use the phrase, including but not limited, limited to and accomplish everything I think uh, Commissioner Cancel and myself, for that matter, are trying to get here. <clears throat> I'd ask then, before I go on to, uh, Commissioner Tarbert, is your hand still raised or you, do you still have more to say? Or I'm not going to go to you yet, but I just wasn't sure. But I was going to go to Commissioner Cancel you know. first and then Attorney O'Connor. But uh, uh, not to you first, but I didn't know if your hand was still raised. No, it was not. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Cancel and then Attorney O'Connor. Yeah, the uh, last uh, proposal by um, Commissioner Jones um, is really um, a lot more, um, it's a lot better than even uh, my language that I suggested. Um, would so. you be willing to offer that as an amendment to your own motion? You know, because we can amend yeah. on and on. If you would and your second accepts that, then we'd go on. So do you want to just? Sure. Uh, I'll just read it out loud then. Um, the um, Governance and Policy Committee will have two members and will be responsible for making recommendations to the board for approval on all matters relating to the governance and policy uh, of the agency included but not limited to developing policy recommendations, developing and carrying out a plan and process for evaluating the executive director, review and make revisions of the bylaws as necessary, and respond to other personal issues not charged to the grievance committee, see section three below. The committee will meet as necessary. Um, I would like to offer that as a, a friendly amendment to my friendly amendment. Thank you. To your own amendment, which is fine as long as your second agrees. Commissioner Tarbutton, would you agree to that as the second of the original motion? I, would I agree to second it? Is that what you Would asked? you agree to second the amendment to the original amendment that... Yeah, well, I'm, I, yeah, I want to get off this Ferris wheel, but yes, of course. <laughs> okay, so it has been... Um, amended by the original maker of the motion to include it to include the language that is such as but not in not limited to 
and then those items that were originally specified. And so now I'll see if there are other folks who would like to have discussion on that matter. The attorney had his hand up. I'm sorry, Commissioner O'Connor. I'm sorry, Attorney O'Connor. Uh, no, I was just going to approve of that language and, and say that Commissioner Jones and Chair Kearney, you should have went to law school because we could have sped this whole thing up by half an hour had we inserted that language in there a long time ago. Thank you. <laughs> We're learning. All right. Thank you, Attorney O'Connor. I don't see any other folks who need to discuss this, so I'll ask the secretary to, if she can, please. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Commissioner Tarbutton, please, had her hand raised. I'm sorry, guys. I, I haven't had much sleep in almost two months, so I'm getting confused here. So I'll just, just stop. I'll just go along and get along here. So that's enough. I'm sorry, was that a question or a comment? I don't see any. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. So, um, Director, uh, I'm sorry, Secretary Leeper, would you please read that motion and we'll make sure it's correct as the maker of the motion and second, seconder. Yes, so I have um, Governance and Policy Committee will have two members and will be responsible for making recommendations to the board for approval on all matters relating to the governance and policy of the agency included, including but not limited to uh, developing policy recommendations, developing and carrying out a plan and process for evaluating the executive director, review and make revisions to the bylaws as necessary, and respond to other personnel issues not charged to the grievance committee. See section three below. The committee will meet as necessary. Is that does that reflect what you had actually asked, offered, Commissioner Cancel? Does that reflect the motion, the amended motion? Yes. Okay. And I'll ask again to the seconder of the motion. Does that reflect uh, what you are now seconding if you do second that? If not, we'll ask for another second. Oh, we'll, we'll go around again. But Commissioner Tarbutton, would you second that amendment that Commissioner Cancel offered? Can I ask why you're pointing me to counsel it? I mean, to second it, there's a lot yes, of- Yes, I'm asking you because you were the seconder of the original motion and these are friendly amendments. And the friendly amendment, meaning the, the maker of the motion himself offered these changes to the, his amendment, uh, to his original amendment. And we're asking if you would accept those as the original seconder of the motion. I will do that. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded. And with those changes that the secretary just read, if there's no further discussion, I'll ask the secretary to call the roll. Yes, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. Yes. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Maureen, you're muted. Sorry, I shouldn't mute myself, but I have a dog that keeps barking. So okay. sorry about that. So that motion does carry. And I'll ask if the secretary, since I don't see any further hands for discussion, I'll ask if the secretary will call the roll. Sure, uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield. I'm not quite sure what I'm voting on now. Can you just explain two seconds? Yes, I'll, I'm going to explain yes. again. I'm going to explain. Commissioner Richards. Yes. And Commissioner. Tar button. Um, this is I'll explain it. I, I'm going to take. I'll a abstain. Moment. I'm not going to vote on anything that I don't. I'll abstain. Sure. I'll abstain. As the seconder of the motion, you want to? Did you, I'm are you the yes. You're I'm, the I'm, seconder okay. of the motion and abstaining. Okay. Point of order. Point of order. Yes, please. 
Um, I think the reason why she's confused is the reason why I'm confused. We just voted for it twice. So she's wondering why she has to vote twice for the same thing. I'm sorry, did I, I thought I was muted during that whole thing. Was I not muted? I thought I was muted during that, so I apologize. Not for the roll call. All right, I'm sorry. So uh, uh, then can you clarify for me, Director Leeper, what were the vote? Uh, I mean, how many votes we have? So you, it, was un, it was unanimous, um, Chair Carney. I am so sorry. I apologize. I keep, <laughs> yeah. So we know that that motion did carry. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Next item is the appointment then. So as chair of the, uh, I mean, as chair of the board, it is my duty to appoint the members of the board. When I looked back, this iteration of this committee that existed in 2019 for a year or so, a year and a half, um, and met once or twice, did consist of the chair and another member of the board. I am naming now myself as the chair of the board to be consistent with the previous iteration and Commissioner Cancel. And those are my appointments to this board and Commissioner Cancel and I will be in communication as to uh, how we will move forward. But I imagine that things will likely be referred from this board otherwise, and we will consider as the, as the newly reinstated governance and policy committee to consider all policies uh, i mean all items of governance and policy including those that were accepted tonight by the whole board that's the last item on that i see on the agenda am i correct correct so i'll ask then is there a final motion motion to adjourn Second. The motion made by Commissioner Cancel, seconded Commissioner Tarbutton to adjourn. All those in favor, non-debatable. Say aye. Aye. And aye, that's aye, unanimous. Aye, aye.